Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen, my name is Saiken and today we're continuing the Rookie Balboa run where we're trying to beat the game on the hardest difficulty with nothing but rookies, four men only plus permanent dark events and on top of that I'm only using secondary equipment because we are so so close to the final mission to Waterworld and I don't want to risk anything going wrong. Uh, all of the equipment that you're seeing in this uh, run theoretically could uh, vanish and we would still have enough to go and uh, do the last mission. This here is a supply raid uh, operation shambling gasp is uh, potentially a smash and grab mission. We got quite a bit of uh, opposition here but luckily we got the lost on our side so rest assured I do have an ultrasonic lure with me and really the uh, core idea here is to grab like one crate and get out. I hope uh, that we uh, can get an uh, Elarium core out of it, maybe some other loot. So we're going to see how well this is going to uh, go. Lyrical and Syn uh, Synapse are with us. Unfortunately, everybody else who wasn't on tier 3 bond is um, either injured, negative trade removal or you name it. Um, the only ones that were available are Shin uh, Shimrod and uh, Axe, so they are going to lead this charge. Um, put in some of the classical rocket launchers for cover, cover removal. Other than that, blue screen rounds, two get out of jail cards, and our beloved ultrasonic lure that has become the staple, uh, the very standard way of dealing with all of the losts. So, off we go, right into the mission, and let's see if we can at least get a crate. Good, and we have landed. Of airlifting a number of supply crates out of this area, and we have an opportunity here to take a few for ourselves. Locate and mark okay, the well, that one is already pretty deep in. I, I know this map quite well, it's the standard map for uh, smash and grab. Fortunately, over there, that is very far away. There might even be a chance uh, that the Chosen will show up, just to make our life a little bit more miserable. I'm all over it. What I'm trying to do is we're getting as close as possible to the actual crate, of course taking the sweet sweet high ground. And as part of uh, the whole setup maybe we'll be able to kind of eliminate a few enemies down there. Good, moving up. And as we're moving up, I think everybody else can also move up. Good, this is going to be tricky because the moment that we're going to scout something down here all hell might break loose on the other hand we got a crate right over there so that's good that's something going in our direction in a perfect world we would find ourselves kind of triggering some of uh, or seeing some of the loss and some of the advent at the same time so both of them can fight one another. Okay, so far. On the move. We're good to go. On my way. Okay. Okay, okay. Very nice. Je bouge. Look, can move to here. It's only half cover, but it's a bit closer to the rest, and that's what's important. Ooh, heck, right down there. Can't see them yet. And there's an Andromedon, okay. Okay. 
Okay, so that setup is suboptimal to begin with. The moment that we're getting out of the window, this will all hell will break loose. So what I would recommend is, since it's not a timed mission, we're just going to Overwatch, see if any of these guys are moving. That at least works well. Alright, now the Andromedon and the Mutant have detected the loss and are starting to just take cover. So I guess one of the questions that I would have is how do we want to deal with the mutants? It's not the end of the world, I want to get, uh, get spotted out anyways. That came across wrong, not wanted, but I wanted to engage anyways. So this is not a big problem. The mutants, uh, the mutants uh, themselves, though, are a bigger concern. Specifically, since they do have grenades, so got to be careful here. I think we can play that with a mimic beacon. And let's get a few more helping hands, shall we? Very well. Good, look. Um, let's sort of cluster up. That's rule number one. Up cover isn't great, that's kind of rule number two. Andromedon. Hmm. Shall we already use one of our one of our explosives? I am tempted uh, mainly mainly because it will trigger more losts but then again they have enough at the moment so might as well take normal shots and try to get that thing down not really a lot that we can do with the repeaters here Keep them, keep them coming. It's, these are some nice crits. I like what I'm seeing. This could, might as well be a kill. Nope, just barely not. Okay. Look, let's rather be safe than sorry, shall we? Yeah, we're having some melee attacks, that's fine. Have they spotted out the Mimic Beacon? No. Yes? Maybe.
Hmm. Okay. Well, so much for the Mimic Beacon. Oh, okay, well, I think we need another Mimic Beacon next turn. Luckily, we got the loss on our side. Yeah, okay, fantastic. Now they're evening out the playing field a little bit. Maybe even a little bit more. That's quite a few losses. Good, we got another Mimic Beacon. And someone needs to go downstairs. That's not a nice uh, job to do. But someone has to do it. Moving to designated position. I'm even thinking about using that Ultrasonic Lure instead of uh, the Mimic Beacon. But first things first, we're marking the supplies crate because that's important. Good work. Can't fully get over there, which is really unfortunate. We got some. We got some really good shots uh, if we're taking the high ground here. Good, so, look. Mutant is an option. None of these uh, things here are necessary dual strike worthy. Can we... Can we take some, uh, some position downstairs? Likely not. Asking myself, what's the best position here? Kind of risk versus reward. On my way. High risk position, but also a lot of reward if it's done right. No really good dual strike, but that's fine. If we were to explode something with our rockets, like how would that look like? Rocket launcher. Apparently you can't really shoot well from the balcony.
we could take that away and free the way to remove um, so it's kill and of the andromedon and essentially free the way to uh, to shoot the mutant that's one option Can't really shoot there. This year would be a gr this year would also be a great option, but unfortunately none of that works. Yeah, this might not be too bad, specifically since it triggers more losses, which is exactly what I was hoping for. But I decided against a Mimic Beacon. This here would mark four enemies. And I think that's the right call. Five enemies even okay wonderful good so a couple of things dromedon shell definitely is a it would be a great target before we think about that though advanced teamwork and let's get the necessary targets out of the way which is that mutant here very good We could deal with the Andromedon shell, that's one option. The other one is getting rid of one of the LC Elite Troopers. Or the Lancer. Lancer is a, is a big concern. But so is uh, the Andromedon. If that strikes, uh, it is going to destroy the crate. And I don't want that to happen. Because it would effectively mean that we cannot, uh, that we cannot uh, win the mission. Well, fantastic. Can't really hit anyone here. 60% on that Codex. I would like to take that chance. Okay, that just made the situation so much worse. Forgot about the stock. That's the best target, and it's not a great one. Luckily, if one of uh, the codices uh, hits us with a uh, psionic bomb, it will get feedbacked and kind of kills itself. We should be fine with most of the guys here in the back line as they can't really do much or won't really do much. They do have plenty of targets available and I don't foresee them shooting, uh, shooting us. The Stun Lancer on the other hand is a bit of a different beast. Can reach us and will potentially try to do that. Right now his magazine is empty. Okay. So far so good.
melee attack, that's fine. And hopefully that will continue. This could be a psionic bomb. Hits one with the psionic bomb. Doesn't kill itself yet. Interesting. Wait, what? He just... He just ran off the balcony? Wow, that's some... Advanced bullshit right there. <laughs> he just ran off the balcony. Like, what the heck? Okay, I was hoping we could um, get a little bit more. I actually kill a few more. But this is going to become spicy now. So what we're going to do is, it's a bit the poor, poor man's exit here. Yeah, no autoloader. See you later. Again, no autoloader. Ramadan shell finally goes down. And that stupid stun lancer also goes down. Yeah, not the best mission. To be entirely honest, the main problem uh, was uh, that running off the balcony. I could have continued uh, if it wasn't for the Andromedon, just like running off the balcony. Um, in my planning, it would have been better to just completely eliminate uh, the and Andromedon shell, start with that effectively, completely get rid of it and... Uh, um, and, and then continue, which would have effectively saved us eight hit points. And we would have had the ability to get back uh, upstairs. I could have started the whole uh, fight from up up there and maybe even saved some more crates. It's not the end of the world uh, to only get one crate. It's not a great mission, it doesn't feel like a true victory. But sometimes uh, you gotta know when to withdraw. And yeah, we only got supplies, uh, alloys and delirium, but unfortunately not what I was hoping for. No cores. Ah. Lamentable. Heavy weapon, that could very much be a really good heavy weapon. We don't need many though, so actually this is kind of more of an of a bonus. I think with the blaster launcher and the shred storm cannon we already have both of the best uh, weapons. And having one each 
definitely makes sense. Good, we got more dodge on Roby. And if my memory doesn't um, mistake me, respectively serves me well, then, yep, none of the other missions can be taken. In terms of soldiers... Roby got 40 dodge now, which is fantastic. Also got gifted combat intelligence. Just imagine if that would be a real, um, a real soldier. That would be great. No, but with these two together, we're looking at 80 dodge, which is quasi 100 dodge. So not too shabby. Uh, shabby, I like it. Be a tank in the last mission. Great, more explosives is exactly what we needed. No. No. Come on. No. Oh, wow. Fantastic evasive maneuvers, Bradford. I guess the UFO comes from the left and will just shoot us down like it always does. In between, we're getting some more dark events. Yep. 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 Oh, complete shocker. Well, let me figure that out real quick. Okay, so we got uh, Roby Diva, Zane, Sonar, Aaron, and Jaranx. Uh, got the Prime Gear uh, from everyone. And the idea would be to just charge in and essentially get this one over with as soon as possible. Potentially a Serpent Armor will make that even faster. So we could grapple in, uh, move, then jump, shoot that uh, whole beacon and sort of use a mimic beacon to, uh, to distract. That will be the approximate strategy, the actual strategy we're going to see about it. Well, and this brings us to the end of today's episode. Thank you for watching, guys. I appreciate uh, your viewership and as always, a full campaign needs to include everything. Shutdown, shutdown, and another shutdown. So we're seeing every type of mission. The only thing that we haven't seen so far is a landed UFO. Um, and yeah, that, it is what it is. I I was hoping to avoid uh, the hunting UFO, but the game just didn't want uh, that to happen. So here we go. Yet another defense.